Hello everyone, what's going on? I am in the cockpit. Here we are inside of this Mercedes. It's absolutely beautiful in here. The halo is in front of me. It's hard to see the camera, but I hope you're all having a tremendous day here. Now, as for the first time, I think, ever on the channel, we're doing tier maker or tier list whatever the heck it is even called um, but we are going to be predicting the f1 2022 drivers on where they're going to stack up in terms of the championship battle i think there's going to be a lot of fun here i of course have my favorites in mind but we don't know where the cars are going to stack up because preseason testing uh at bahrain and spain haven't even happened of course yet that's still at the end of february is pretty much so this is going to be an interesting one to see maybe look back towards the you know first couple of gps on the season uh, and actually see where we stacked up then and then of course at the end of the season but uh nonetheless let's dive into it okay so we are starting here with mick schumacher that is our first option that we have with the Haas F1 team. So I think this is an interesting one right here, actually, because um, we look at where Haas has been in the past. We look at where I personally think Haas is going to be. You know, if I have to base it off of the livery they read uh, or just uh, put out there the other day, I'm going to say this car is going to be at the back still. But I'm going to say I really do feel like even with the new start of the uh, next generation, basically for Formula One with the new cars and stuff, I don't think Haas is actually going to be a competitive team. I think they're still going to be right where they left off. Basically, they might be a little bit closer and might have an opportunity to, you know, get some surprise performances in there. But I still think they are going to be a back marker so i'm gonna put schumacher here unfortunately i hate to do it because i really like mick schumacher but i'm gonna put him at the bottom of oh that's bottom of the midfield sorry we got midfield bottom of the midfield midfield hunters so that's what we're gonna do midfield hunters that's at the very very bottom of the grid so yeah I, that's where i feel like schumacher is going to be unfortunately i really hate to say that Okay, next up we have Max Verstappen, our defending, of course, Formula One world title. I don't care what your opinion is on what happened in Abu Dhabi. Verstappen did nothing wrong. He won the title in the situation that he was handed and fully deserved it because he did nothing wrong. So we can all move on from Abu Dhabi no matter what happened at the end of the day because nothing's going to change at the end of the day. But Max Verstappen, Red Bull, they of course put a lot of focus into beating Mercedes in 2021 and they fought hard trying to upgrade that car as late into the season as they possibly could. So Red Bull's in a really um, interesting situation. But I think I'm going to say that Verstappen is a contender. I mean, you look at just raw talent, Verstappen, in my opinion, um, probably the most talented Formula One driver in the field right alongside Lewis Hamilton right now. So I would have to put him as a contender. I feel like Red Bull, I think they're still going to be contending for the best team on the grid. I have in mind who I think is going to be the best team, and we're going to get to that shortly, um, and I will explain why, of course, now. But we move on to Checo here, Sergio Perez. Um, I'm going to say... When it comes to him, I'm going to go Dark Horse Contender once again now. I don't think he's going to have uh, enough to put the fight to a guy like Max Verstappen or a guy like Lewis Hamilton can, uh, if I think those cars are going to line up where I expect them to. Now, I'm sure there's going to be maybe one team in here that surprises us all uh, with their performance and i'm very curious to see what team that's going to be let me know in the comments what team you think that is going to be but now we come up to my favorite driver of sebastian vettel and i'm really really hoping that um aston martin got everything together for this new car because as a vettel fan i need at least one more race victory now if this was 2021 of course we'd put him right here you know in the midfield i'm actually going to label uh, Sebastian Vettel as a dark horse contender. I think that Aston Martin is going to bring him a car capable of competing in the odd GP, maybe for a victory, so um, or at least a podium. So I'm going to put him as a dark horse contender here. Uh, and then we go right to his teammate, of course, with Lance Stroll, Canadian, just like myself here. And now I'm going to put him, I think Sebastian Vettel, um, considering... He was in his first year with Aston Martin and, and um, adapting to that car. He was already able to outperform uh, Lance on many occasions 
And of course, Lance still did get the best of Sebastian. He did straight up beat Sebastian here and there as well. So no discredit to Lance, but I think now that Sebastian's gotten the hang of it a little bit more, now of course we go to a brand new car, but that kind of evens the playing field when Lance already had a bit of an advantage over Sebastian. So I think um, I'm gonna put Lance in the midfield, keep Sebastian as a dark horse contender. Okay, now we come up on Carlos Sainz, who's going to be in line as my favorite driver after Sebastian Vettel retires. Now, here's where I'm going to bring in um, the mention of this is the team that I think is going to be actually the, the strongest team this season here in 2022, and that is Ferrari. And I'm going to choose, I'm, I'm going to say it now, Carlos Sainz, I'm putting him straight into the contender, and I'm going to choose... Carlos Sainz as my 2022 Formula One World Champion. I would love to hear what your guys' Formula One World Champion pick is down below. Make sure to let me know. But I think he did a great job adapting to the Ferrari car in 2021, um, where Charles already had, what, three or two seasons under his belt in that car, and Carlos got in, beat him in the standings. Now, of course, Carlos. Um, or Charles, I should say, had a lot of bad luck involved. There was a lot of things out of his control that really costed him a lot of good finishes and points. Um, so it was kind of easy to see why Carlos beat him. But that is not a very good excuse at the same time because Carlos, no, he, he had the pace to contend with Charles for the majority of the season and put up good battles. And I'm going to say... Uh, that Carlos is going to have the upper edge just barely, but I'm still going to put uh, Charles in the contenders as well. I think he'll be right there competing for the championship. I don't think he'll be far off of Carlos. I think they're going to still be relatively close. So right now, uh, we don't have anybody in the bottom of the midfield. We got contenders of Verstappen, Carlos, Charles. So those are the three so far that I think will be contending for the championship and then with Perez and Vettel as the they have the opportunity to maybe be involved into the mix and maybe get some podiums maybe the odd race victory but they're not going to be consistent enough to win the world championship or contend right at the end of the year now we got Valtteri Bontas of course going to Alfa Romeo after being on Mercedes for multiple seasons there from 2017 all the way through 2021 I think that Alfa Romeo um, I'm going to say that they're not very, very different compared to where they were in 2021, but I am going to honestly say that they are going to be bottom of the midfield. Um, I, I, that's where I'm going to rank Bottas and I'm as well, uh, I think I'm going to put Guan Yu Zhou in, you know, it's really hard. I think I'll put Guan Yu Zhou, actually. I think I'll put both the Alfa Romeo teammates right at the bottom of the midfield. I think Bottas will have the upper edge over Guan Yu, of course, just having more experience. But then, once again, brand new car, and it really equalizes, I think, the playing field here. But I think the F1 drivers still at least know more what to expect compared to the F2 drivers because they're used to, of course, the F1 car and really having to fight that thing and um, aggressively attack, which, of course... They have to do that in Formula 2 as well, but not to the extent as Formula 1. So I, I think Bottas will have the upper edge there. And I'm going to say he will be better than Guan Yu Zhou in terms of the results and performances. But I think they'll still both be towards the bottom of the midfield. Okay, now we have the Williams team here. Now this is an interesting one. I think Williams is going to be one of the teams that really excel going into this season here. And... I'm going to have to say that uh, their, their driver lineup isn't the best in the world. Uh, don't get me wrong. I think Latifi is a fine driver. I think Albon is a fine driver. But they're not to that next level where I think they're ready to take the step to, of course, fight for podiums or anything. So what I'm going to do is put Williams right in the midfield here with both Albon. Actually, I'm going to say that I'm going to put Latifi in the bo bottom of the midfield. Uh, I, I don't think you'll have the same pace as um, Alex Albon. So I'm going to put Albon right there in the midfield. I think Williams will have a car that is capable of getting him to uh, battling for points finishes here and there. Not all the time, but definitely a car that is capable of doing it. And of course, not a car though that would be capable of being a dark horse contender where they can get the odd podium and maybe uh, sometimes be in the hunt for a race victory. Next up, we have seven-time world champion of Lewis Hamilton. I immediately am going to throw him in the contenders now. I think Mercedes is still going to be right there in the mix. So that's the fourth driver I've added that I think uh, will be 
in the mix for the title uh, right down to the end of the season, the final like quarter of the season, I guess I can call it when I'm labeling them a contender. I think they'll be going in for the battle for the championship within the final six, seven GP still at that point. Lewis, I mean, it's an obvious pick. I mean, um, in my generation of watching Formula One, I mean, the hands down, the most successful best driver we've ever seen. So it's an obvious pick. And I think Mercedes will still provide a championship contending car. So really a no-brainer right there. Not I don't really think I have to explain myself as to why I have Lewis there as a contender. George Russell, on the other hand, I'm going to put him in a dark horse contender. I think that he might struggle. I mean, he's, of course, a, a fantastic race car driver with the, in the Formula 1 cars, but I'm going to put him a dark horse contender. I think he might struggle against Lewis a little bit and maybe have a bit of a, a rough first season rough first outing which is might be crazy to say considering the one race he did with mercedes back in bahrain in 2020 he was en route to win that gp if they didn't have all those issues so um maybe a little bit bold from myself but i'm gonna stick with a dark horse contender he might click off one or two gp wins um and get some podiums but i don't think he's gonna be in the championship mix down to the end of the season i just don't think he's going to be able to hang on that long but now we go to lando norris i think personally mclaren they're not going to be as strong in 2022 i think they're going to drop the ball a little bit you know in 2021 i would label them as a dark horse contender now i'm going to put lando and daniel both of them both mclaren drivers i'm going to throw them actually in the midfield i just think that i think they're both race winning caliber drivers of course with daniel proving himself at red bull and at monza in 2021 and then lando coming so close in the russian gp i think they're both easily capable of winning gps in the right car but i think mclaren's going to drop the ball this season and they're not going to quite have the pace that they're looking for okay here's an interesting one uh fernando alonso esteban ocon uh here with the alpine team it, it, it's 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 a tough one, but I'm going to put Fernando. I'm going to put Fernando as a dark horse contender. I think Alpine maybe makes a step in the right direction and basically kind of overtakes McLaren and is right there with Aston Martin as well, but just maybe um, a tad behind Red Bull, Ferrari, and at Mercedes, but just at the right circuit with the right setup they still have a car capable of being able to maybe get into the podium places uh, as well as maybe try and sneak out a victory kind of like they did in hungary uh last year with esteban ocon behind the wheel and of course fernando alonso um i don't consider him the most talented formula one driver because he's got to go against max verstappen but i do consider fernando in my opinion uh one of the most talented just race car drivers in general you could put him into anything and he can just find a way to be successful so i'm gonna have fernando as my dark horse now with ocon i wish there was an option in between dark horse and midfield because i would personally put ocon like right here but i can't obviously yeah no i can't so i'm gonna put him midfield um, he, he had good peace, uh, peace. He had good pace compared to Fernando last year. He really did. He actually did a superb job going against a two time formula one world champion. But when I say midfield for Esteban, I put him above everybody here in the midfield of, uh, Lance Stroll, Albon, Norris, as well as Ricardo. basically, um, yeah, ahead of all these guys, but just behind, Fernando is kind of what I'm thinking there. So now we move on to the Alpha Tori team. This is another interesting one that's uh, hard to really, I think, determine, but I'm going to put Gasly here as well as Yuki Sonoda right directly smack dab in the midfield as well. I don't think they're going to be contending for podiums. I don't think they're going to be able to crank out a race of victory unless, of course, we have a crazy GP like Monza in 2020, which allowed ghastly to pick up the victory there so that's kind of my reasoning for that i think they're going to just kind of be where they usually are really right in that midfield now as they can never seem to get past that and they never really seem to fall below that although ghastly put up one heck of a pace up last year uh he was unbelievable there for the uh alpha Tori. i mean i could almost put ghastly as well kind of in that spot where i wanted to put ocon but i'm gonna leave him right here in the midfield then we got um Nikita Madison pin I'm nothing I really need to say on that one we'll put him right at the bottom here uh of the grid so 
that's going to be my F1 predictions for 2022 with the championship grid. So my contenders for the championship are going to be Max Verstappen, Carlos Sainz, Charles Leclerc, as well as Lewis Hamilton with Perez, Vettel, uh, Russell, and Alonso kind of in the background fighting for the on victory and podium, but just not enough there to actually compete for the championship. And then, of course, we got plenty there in the midfield with Ocon, Stroll, uh, Albon, Norris, Ricardo, Gasly, and Tsunoda. And then towards the bottom of the midfield, we got uh, Bottas, Guan Yu Zhou, and then uh, Nicholas Latifi. And then still at the bottom of the grid, I really do think Haas and Schumacher and Mazepin are going to be there at the very bottom of the grid so that's my predictions and of course for the championship overall my pick is carlos Sainz. i want to hear what you guys think of my list if you think it's going to be good or not it's of course no one really knows right so it's going to be interesting here and the reason of course uh, i have ferrari up top is because ferrari has just been um they spent all of 2021 it felt like just investing their resources into this new car and i feel like that's why this team is going to be the top team we know they found some more engine power they've confirmed that as well so i think there's a lot here to expect from ferrari and i think they're going to come out really hot in 2022 i think that will be the actual team to beat but hamilton verstappen will still have a car capable of bringing the fight to Leclerc and signs right down to the end. But that does it for me. If you guys enjoyed it, you know what to do. I'd like to thank you all for taking the time of your day to watch this video and more. But I will see you guys in the next one. Have a great day, everybody.